that everybody doesn't have twenty one hundred dollars. And the Lord convicted me on that. And I went back and I prayed about it. And I want to apologize. Greetings, y'all, and welcome to See Things Above TV. I'm your host, Lou Chikuni. So, man, today we're doing a follow-up video to Keon Henderson's recent plea for uh, some donations to be made to his church, totaling $4.4 million, and how he made a follow-up statement that kind of seemed to apologize, but not really apologize. So we're going to get into that in a second, man. If y'all like content like this, y'all know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Without further ado, let's hop right into it. I'd ask 2,100 people to give $2,100. And the newspaper did the math, and they said Pastor Henderson asked his 20,000 members for $4.4 million. Let me even make sure that that's what it equals because I hadn't even done the math yet. Yeah, it's 4.4. I hadn't done the math. It was what God had given me. Forgive me for being a little skeptical, man, but I do not believe that he had not done this math that he's talking about, okay? I don't think you're gonna throw out pleas for large amounts of money and you haven't done some kind of math behind it. But anyway, let's keep it rolling. And anybody who had been listening. I want you to go back and you can find the tape somewhere. I said before the hurricane had come that God was gonna give us 2,100 people to give $2,100 in 21 days and we were gonna do it debt free. This is not new. We were already on this trajectory before the storm had come. What I forgot to do that I'm gonna do right now is remind myself that everybody doesn't have $2,100. And the Lord convicted me on that. And I went back and I prayed about it. And I want to apologize for not offering an opportunity for people who don't have it like that. Everybody doesn't have $2,100. The Lord said, but somebody has $21. No one of us is going to do this. And if you go back and read the article, they'll tell you that the building was $20 million. So what does $4 million do when you have a $20 million problem? All right. So let's get into this for a second, y'all. So, so he is saying, okay, that he, uh, first of all, so he didn't, he didn't know what this amount was going to total. That's the first thing he said. And notice he said that that was the amount that God had given him. Okay. So God had instructed him, given, put this on his mind, according to Keon, that God had put this on his mind and his heart that the number was exactly what he had said it was, okay? And then later, now he's saying that he's coming back and he is apologizing because not everybody has the $2,100. So how is it possible? And he says that God convicted him, okay? God convicted him of that. And now he's coming back and apologizing and saying that, hey, if you have $21, go ahead and give $21. How is God going to give him a certain amount of money and say, this is what we need for, I want you to have this <laughs> amount for this building fund. And then God is going to later say, hey, but you know what? You need to repent because some people don't have it. Like, it, it doesn't make sense. It just shows you uh, that this is the God told me ism thing. And it is really something that somebody conjures up of their own making, okay? It's a number, it's an amount that somebody conjures up. And to me, this is even worse than uh, some of the other stuff that he has uh, sort of said in this, because when you really start emphatically lying on God, that is dangerous territory. That's really dangerous territory. And that's what seems to be happening here, where he is saying that God told him to do stuff and it wasn't God. Like, you need help for your building fund, ask for the help, but then... Now, making it seem as though God is the one instructing you to do all this stuff, that's just not it. That is not it at all. So what does $4 million do when you have a $20 million problem? It's not even a drop in the bucket. But of you who are watching me right now, if you will give $21 three times, because we're going to do it in three weeks. We don't have two years to wait. I've got 20,000 sheep who are scattered across this city saying, 
Pastor, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. Between now and Thanksgiving, I hear God saying Thanksgiving. Between now and Thanksgiving, everything that we need will be in the storehouse. For those of y'all who have the $2,100, please, please meet me and the several other people who said, Pastor, I'm going to sow that $2,100. Please meet us so that we can continue to get those 250 K-5 through fifth graders back in the school because right now our school is even shut down. Or perhaps you didn't know that we on this side of the building, we house infants from three months up to pre-K-5. The daycare is now closed. So that's 300 kids every day of every week who depend on us to be open, who are now wondering, what are we going to do? I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put our money where our mouth is. And those who can give on the $2,100 level, you can split that up into $700 a week for three weeks, or you can do it all at once. For those of you all who have $21, you can do that three times, three weeks in a row. Or for those of you all who don't have that, you can give whatever you got. But I promise you, if we all come in together, we can make a difference. None of this goes to me. Look at me in my face. I am not raising money for another suit. I am not raising money for a new car. I am not raising money to pay a mortgage. I am not asking you to give so I can take a lavish trip. If I'm lying, I'm dying and I'm standing right here. So a few things to observe right there, man. So first of all, we see that the payment plan has now come into effect. And whether you have the uh, $2,100, there's a flexible way for you to pay in three installments. Whether you have the $21 times three, you have a flexible plan for you as well. So everything has gotten a whole lot easier. And remember where we started from, right? God told him to do the original amount. Now things are getting flexible. And then notice now he hears God saying that it's going to be by Thanksgiving. He hears God saying Thanksgiving. Listen, like he is not hearing this from God. These are the imaginations of his own mind, where these amounts are coming from, where these deadlines are coming from and all of that. If you have a vision that you want to see it happen by then, just say you have a vision that you want to see it happen by then, but do not use the name of the kids uh, who you serve there in the community through the daycare and all this kind of stuff to manipulate people to give talking about all these things as though you have this great burden that perhaps the other people in the area don't have because this hurricane affected many people. So it's not just your immediate community. A lot of people are trying to figure things out and we're not trying to be uh, insensitive to those folks who now are trying to say, you know, what's going to happen? I got to go to work. Where are my kids going to daycare? These are real problems, and we sympathize with those people. But this is now where uh, something is being used, and people's uh, names are being brought up, or at least the picture of certain people is being brought up so that it can cause you to give. And the way this is being handled, man, is just not of God. I think he actually just needs to repent of this entire approach that he used from the beginning. If you need the money, just say you need the money, but don't say that it's God who told you that you need these certain amounts and all that other stuff. So there is clearly a problem with the way this whole thing has been approached from the beginning. This invoking the name of God to gain funds for this rebuild, the plucking on people's heartstrings, mentioning the children and all the work that they're doing. All these things have just not seemed proper and really cause people to be more suspicious of giving to this ministry, let alone the teaching that goes on there, some of the prosperity vibes even in this video, uh, much of it actually, where he talks about no weapon being formed against them will prosper and all these other things. And, you know, just you know how, how it all works, right? So he, he 
the teaching there it, it seems to be devoid of true uh, devotion and commitment to really just sticking to what the scriptures say. And we're seeing that play out now because now it's this God told me ism on full display. And clearly, man, this is not from the Lord, man. So I think that he just honestly needs to repent of this whole situation and keep it moving. If you're going to ask for money, ask for money. Don't say God is the one telling you to ask for that money. So, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I would love to hear from y'all. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. And if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. All right. God bless y'all. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace. Thank you.